Having built up a right understanding of how to construct a probability measure in a discrete space, we should promptly try out some examples for mass functions to build up intuition. So let us start with what I shall call the usual culprits. These are distributions, mass functions, which crop up repeatedly again and again in theory and in practice. So let us begin with the simplest of them all, the combinatorial distribution. We start with an integer parameter n, fixed but arbitrary, 3, 5, 10, 100, a million, what have you. The sample space corresponds to the integers from 1 through n. For example, if n were 6, this could be the sample space corresponding to the throw of a die. We consider the following allocation of atomic probabilities to the sample points 1 through n. Allocate to each pk, for k running from 1 through n, equal value 1 over n. Now, when I posit that this is a, an honest mass function, then I am saying, in fact, that the axioms of probability are, in fact, satisfied. Are they? We should very quickly test this out. The first axiom of positivity. Is the mass function positive? Of course, this is completely trite. The number 1 over n is a positive number for each of the values, 1 through n. So, pk is manifestly positive. What about normalization? Well, normalization is equally trite. In this case, if I sum the values of pk, k runs from 1 to n, so I'm adding the values p1 to p2 all the way up through pn, but each of these is equal to the same value 1 over n, and there are n terms in the sum, therefore you get n times 1 over n, or 1, and normalization is again tritely satisfied. This is by far the simplest probability measure in a discrete space, and this was the focus of classical probability, probability in antiquity. The games of chance, urn models, all rely upon this at some fundamental level. In settings like this, it is natural to ask, is it possible to write the probabilities of events in a nice and compact way? And indeed, one can. So suppose A is any event. An event in this space is then a subset of the numbers from 1 through n. Well, then the probability of A is obtained via additivity simply as the sum of the atomic probabilities. But all the atoms have equal probability 1 over n. And therefore, the probability of A is given simply by the number of elements in A divided by n, the cardinality of A divided by n, or in more colloquial language, the number of outcomes favorable for A divided by the total number of possible outcomes. Here's another example, slightly more complex this time. This leads to the august binomial distribution. It's a little more complex. Now, there are two parameters in play. First, a positive integer parameter, n. And second, a positive real parameter that is traditionally called lowercase p. It's a number between 0 and 1. In such settings, it is inevitable to write q to be 1 minus p. So q, again, is another real number, also between 0 and 1, and p plus q takes value exactly 1. The sample space here is a set of integers from 0 all the way up to n. The sample space consists of n plus 1 points. Now, I've co-opted the letter little p here as a parameter of this distribution. So I don't want to use p of k for the mass functions. Let's use b of k, b standing for binomial, for the mass function. Now, in a more verbose form, this is a mass function or distribution which has got two parameters, two fixed constants, fixed but arbitrary, n and p. So sometimes, in a slightly more verbose notation, we will write b with a subscript n, the argument k tells you which outcome is in play, 
and a semicolon followed by the second parameter p. And the reason for the choice of such an involved nomenclature will become apparent as we go along. But allocate to the kth outcome the atomic probability given by n choose k times p to the power k times q to the power n minus k. k now runs through the integer values 0, 1, 2, 3, up till n. These are putative atomic probabilities for an experiment. Are these honest? Are these legitimate? Naturally enough, we want to verify positivity and normalization. Let's start with positivity first. Well, again, this is trite. The expression b sub n of k and p is involves a binomial coefficient, which by definition is non-negative, and involves powers of positive quantities, and therefore it is strictly positive. And therefore, these atomic probabilities are all positive for each of the values k running from 0 through n. Positivity is tritely satisfied. What about normalization? Pause for a moment, write down a normalization sum, and see if we can verify, indeed, that these form an honest mass function. When you're ready, start the lecture. OK, so now we're looking for normalization. Let, let's write down a normalization sum. You've got to sum over all possibilities for k. k now runs between the integers from 0 through n. And then you write down these binomial probabilities. Did you recognize a binomial sum in there? Did you recognize the binomial theorem coming into play? That sum is exactly the binomial expansion of p plus q to the power n. If you don't remember this, you should go back, take a look at the summary in Tableau 2, part 2. Now, remember, Q is defined to be 1 minus P, and therefore P plus Q is identically 1, and 1 to the power n is manifestly 1, and therefore normalization is satisfied. Perhaps no, not quite so trite this time. We needed a binomial identity. But nonetheless, we have an honest mass function in hand. This distribution turns out to be the first of the three fundamental distributions in all of probability. We will see that it makes an appearance when you talk about poles. When you talk about accumulated successes in repeated trials in gambling games, it arises naturally in statistical tests. It's a fundamental distribution. For our purposes today, all that matters is it is a function of k, which is honest. It is a mass function. It is positive and adds to 1. To form event probabilities, I'm going to have to add atomic probabilities. As in the combinatorial case, I could hope to find simple, closed-form, compact descriptions of event probabilities. Sadly, we don't have such simple forms available to us in settings like this. So we'll have to have recourse to either analytical estimates or simple numerical probability computations, starting by adding up various elements of a binomial sum. The origins of the name, the binomial distribution, are not clear. It's because of the binomial coefficient that appears in the definition of this object. The next of the major distributions goes back to the year 1837. It was discovered by Simeon Poisson, and in his honor, it is called the Poisson distribution. This is a single parameter distribution. Traditionally, the parameter is called lambda. Lambda is a strictly positive parameter. The sample space here is all non-negative integers. Tradition compels us sometimes to write this as z with a superscript plus to denote the collection of non-negative integers. The probabilities we want to assign to atoms, say to the number k, k being some non-negative integer, we allocate probability p of k. And sometimes 
to make explicit that there's an underlying parameter, a fixed but arbitrary positive constant in play, we write it as p of k semicolon lambda. We define this with a particular exponential form, e to the power minus lambda times lambda to the power k over k factorial, and k here runs through all the atoms. k runs through all the integers, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so forth. Now, this looks like a more complex form. Now, we have not just a finite number of atomic probabilities, but an infinite number of them, albeit a countable infinity. Naturally, we want to check positivity. And again, we say that this is trite. The exponential function is always positive. Powers of a positive number are positive. The factorial is positive, And therefore, the Poisson probabilities are positive, And therefore, positivity is trite. What about normalization? Pause for a moment, write down our normalization sum, and see if you recognize in the sum something from elementary calculus. Perhaps an atavistic memory might stir. Pause the lecture, and when you're ready, restart it. So let's write down the sum of the Poisson probabilities. Here, the index k runs through all the non-negative integers. The e to the power minus lambda doesn't depend upon k, it can come out of a sum. And we have a sum of lambda to the power k divided by k factorial. Did you discover, did you recover the exponential function? The expression in the sum is exactly the exponential series for e to the power lambda. And therefore, you get e to the power minus lambda times e to the power lambda. By the rule of exponents, this is exactly 1, and normalization is verified. Excellent. This distribution is the second of the three fundamental distributions in all of probability. And we'll see examples. It arises in the context of rare events, hurricanes, uh, collapses, failures of machinery. It arises in arrival processes, in queues. And we shall see several rich applications involving this distribution as we move along. The last of our elementary examples is what's called the geometric distribution. This is a single parameter distribution. It is determined by a positive real parameter, again sadly called little p, which takes a value between 0 and 1. Again, in this context, we will write q to mean 1 minus p. And again, q is also a number between 0 and 1. The sample space for this experiment, I have not specified what the experiment is, but I shall eventually, is the collection of non-negative integers, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, ad infinitum. Now again, I've co-opted little p for a parameter of the distribution. It's a fixed constant. And therefore, I need to give the mass function, the distribution, a different name. Let me call it W of k. So W of k is the atomic probability associated with the sample point, the integer k. Again, if it becomes important to bear in mind the underlying parameter for this experiment, this quantity which is fixed but arbitrary, then we'll write W k of p. Now, wk is defined to be q to the power k times p, k running over all the non-negative integers, 0, 1, 2, 3, and so forth. And now the reason for the name becomes apparent. What I've given you is a geometrically declining set of probabilities as k increases. And therefore, this is called the geometric distribution. Of course, we should verify positivity and normalization. Again, let's start with positivity. And we realize immediately that q to the power k is always positive, p is always positive, and therefore positivity is trite. These geometric probabilities are strictly positive for every non-negative integer. What about normalization? Again, pause the lecture, write down a normalization sum, and see if it triggers some atavistic memory from the calculus, which can allow you to write down the answer in one line. When you're ready, restart the lecture. 
Good. Let's write down the normalization sum. So we have a sum over all the mass atomic probabilities, sum over the mass function as k varies. Remember, p is a fixed but arbitrary parameter. Now, in the expression q to the k times p, p does not depend upon k, and therefore can come out of the sum. And so we have to evaluate a sum over k of q to the power k. And you might recognize, since q is a number between 0 and 1, that we have a geometric series coming into play. The sum of powers of q is the reciprocal of 1 minus q. And therefore, we get p divided by 1 minus q. Recall that 1 minus q is just another name for p, and therefore we get normalization. So in fact, we have a, an honest mass function. This mass function, this distribution, arises in models of waiting times, in models of run lengths when we have sequences of some event happening before something else happens. And again, this is one of the fundamental distributions.